What's new for PDF Element 10 for Mac? Part 1. PDF Element 10 is here and its arrival signals the dawn of a new era in PDF editing. In previous videos, we delved deep into two of the most prominent features that were added to the PDF Element for Mac workspace, AI Tools and Request eSign. If you're not yet familiar with these two features, I highly recommend watching those videos as they will unlock a wide range of possibilities that you won't want to miss. However, PDF Element 10's innovations extend far beyond these two new features. Numerous new features have been added, along with many enhancements to the reading and navigation experience, batch process management, document sharing, range organization, and form creation. Hello everyone, I'm George and welcome back to the official PDF Element YouTube channel. In this video, we'll thoroughly analyze what these changes are all about and see how they can enhance our PDF Element workspace. To begin, I'd like to focus on the two new features aimed at enhancing our reading experience in PDF Element 10, improved page numbers and bookmarks. Let's begin by analyzing the bookmarks feature and the changes it has received in this latest major update. If you've used the bookmarks feature in PDF Element 9, you might remember that to use the bookmarks feature in PDF Element 9, every time you found a relevant section in your documents, we had to create a bookmark, give it a name, and then use the context menu to choose the location in the document where we wanted it to take us. But from now on, things will be much simpler. Now, when you access the bookmarks feature, you'll see an auto bookmarks button. By clicking it, PDF Element will leverage the power of its new AI features to automatically detect all the key points in the document and automatically create bookmarks to assist your navigation. The improvements made to the bookmarks feature greatly enhance the browsing experience within our electronic documents, allowing us to swiftly access pertinent information in an organized manner. Continuing our exploration of the improvements in our navigation and reading experience, I'm pleased to announce that in PDF Element 10, a significant change has been made to the page number feature. To illustrate its new potential, I'd like to set up a scenario. Imagine you and your colleagues have collaborated on creating an annual report about your company's growth. Some of you were responsible for creating visual representations of the data, like bar and line charts to showcase financial trends, while others focused on crafting detailed analysis of the company's performance and strategies. As some of them finish their respective parts, they send them to you and you compile them into a PDF to preview and review how it will look when it's completed. However, while reviewing the document, you realize that some data is inaccurate and you need your colleagues to make corrections on specific pages. The issue here is that the document doesn't have page numbers because essentially it is not finished yet. And as soon as someone else completes their part and you integrate it, what used to be page five could become page 10. This makes it challenging to reach a precise consensus on the changes that need to be made. With this scenario in mind, I'd like to tell you about the improvements made to the page number feature in PDF Element 10. The updated page number feature now lets you manage page numbering by defining ranges, simplifying the process of numbering sections independently. Let me show you how this works with a quick example. Take a look at this document. It's a corporate report that not only provides a detailed analysis of a company's annual growth, but also includes a section with charts and diagrams. Let's say I need to review it and communicate to my team the pages that require corrections. To streamline this process and prepare for potential future image editions, I've decided to number only the text-based pages with essential information. This approach simplifies error identification while preserving the flexibility to add the images as needed. Sounds complex, right? Well, let me demonstrate just how easy this can be accomplished in PDF Element 10. The first step is to open the page number feature from the tools tab. Afterwards, at the center of the screen, you'll have a clear view of your document, including any edits you make accompanied by a toolbar featuring four essential tools situated at the top of the window. Pay attention to the tool in the top right corner of the window. Page range is the feature we'll use to set the range of pages we want to number. As mentioned earlier, my goal is to assign page numbers solely to the essential text-based pages within the document, excluding both the cover page and the section that contains charts and diagrams. With this goal in mind, I will create two distinct ranges, ensuring that the pages with charts and diagrams are excluded. Then, using the Add Page Number tool, I'll click on the plus button in the right panel to create a formatting template that looks good and fits seamlessly with the design of the pages in my document. And that's it. The page numbering in my document turned out just as I expected. Numbering our documents by page ranges provides a customized and efficient way to organize our documents. This technique allows for anticipating the addition or removal of pages 
without altering the original order of the document, which is particularly valuable for facilitating simultaneous collaboration by multiple individuals in document creation. And speaking of page range organization and management processes, there's something about this new version of PDF Element that personally fascinates me. I'm sure you've been in that situation where you had to convert a scanned document into a PDF, right? As you probably know, the process of scanning a page is essentially the same as taking a high quality photograph of the page to create an image. But imagine this scenario. You open a folder containing all the images of your document and use the PDF from images feature to convert all the images from a scanned document into a single PDF. Then you start reviewing your document and even apply optical character recognition or OCR to accomplish this. But suddenly you realize that some pages which were meant to be displayed horizontally in a landscape orientation appear vertically in a portrait orientation due to the way that they were scanned. Until recently, there were two solutions to this problem. The first option was to rescan the pages, ensuring that the orientation is correct. The second choice involved individually rotating each page using the available rotation options in the thumbnails tab. While more efficient than rescanning, it became laborious if your document had multiple pages that needed to be rotated. But don't worry, this is where PDF Elements' new feature, Rotate Pages, comes into action. All you have to do is expand the thumbnail panel. Hover over the thumbnail of the page you want to change the orientation of and open the context menu. Then select the Turn to Organize Pages option. This will take you to a window where you will see a grid with thumbnails of all the pages in the document and a toolbar at the top of the window. Click on the Rotate tool and you'll see a panel appear on the right side of the window. Now pay attention to the Add Page Range option. Using this feature, you can quickly easily set page ranges to rotate multiple pages at once. Keep in mind that, if necessary, you can add multiple ranges. And when everything is ready, use the blue buttons to rotate the pages to the right or left as needed. Moreover, if you pay attention to the options in the suggested page section, you'll find several preset selection suggestions that can further expedite this process. And there you go. As you can see, the pages of this document are now correctly oriented. This way, you won't waste time rotating pages individually. Now, continuing with the discussion of organizing pages by range, there's a familiar scenario that most of us have encountered at some point, and I wanna discuss it with you. As you probably know, there are different paper sizes used worldwide for various purposes. These standard paper sizes are designed to meet specific printing, copying, graphic design, and document publishing needs based on their content. It's important to note that when we create PDFs using scanned images, PDF Element will automatically assign a size to the pages of our document, doing its best to respect the size of the original image. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that the page size is exactly what we need for our document. For example, what you're seeing on the screen is a charter party agreement. If you try to print it, you'll notice that most printing features will automatically adapt the content to fit the letter size paper. The issue arises because according to official regulations, these documents must be printed on legal size paper. This is necessary to allow for the convenient addition of comments and signatures in the margins of the page. The situation becomes even more complex when your document combines pages that need to be printed on legal size paper with others that require different sizes such as pages with images or graphics. In these cases, we can't solve the problem by simply adjusting the print preferences to make the entire document legal size. For a situation like this, we can turn to one of the new features that arrived with PDF Element version 10, page size customization. To address these types of issues, there is a size tool in the Organize Pages window. The quickest and most direct way to access this tool is through the size option that appears when you open the context menu over the thumbnail of a page you want to adjust. As soon as you open the size tool, you'll see a panel on the right hand side of the screen. In this panel, the first thing you'll see is the current size of the document. Thanks to these measurements, I can be sure that even though the pages of my document look fine, they are not legal size and this could cause me problems. So before making any changes, let's thoroughly assess the situation. My document consists of four pages that need to be printed on legal size paper. The rest are blueprints that I can print on letter size paper. With this in mind, I'll use the fields in the add page range section to create a range for the first four pages. Then I'll select the legal size from the set page size dropdown menu and click on apply. Perfect. Now my first four pages are legal size. Then I just need to repeat the process to assign letter size to the rest of the pages. But I've just realized that these blueprints have an issue. The images on these pages are in a portrait orientation, 
making them relatively small and hard to view. Here, I'd like to pause and clarify something. Rotating a page and choosing an orientation for its content are not exactly the same thing. Rotating a page is ideal in situations where we use software to open our documents, and we encounter one or more pages that we can easily read if we tilt our heads or, even better, rotate the page. But changing the content orientation is ideal for situations where the content takes up more space horizontally than vertically, because this way we can make better use of the page space. That's why in this case, besides adjusting the size of these pages to letter size, I'll also change the orientation of these blueprints to landscape, and afterwards I'll use PDF Elements editing tools to scale the images to match the page size. Pretty cool, isn't it? The new page range organization features will make enhancing the appearance and functionality of our PDFs faster and easier than ever before. Remember that right now PDF Element is already available for you to download for free, both from the App Store and the official PDF Element website. If you already have version 9 of PDF Element and want to start enjoying all these new features, you can simply use the App Store to update your application to the latest version of PDF Element without having to do anything else. Before I say goodbye, I want to thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. If this video was helpful to you, I'd appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe to this channel, and I will continue bringing you more videos with many tips and tricks to make your work easier. You can also take a look at the rest of the videos on this channel, there you will find more videos just like this one. Have a great day and see you next time.